Good morning. It's uh, Jeremy. It's Sunday, November the 1st, day after Halloween. I hope everyone's recovered from uh, their celebrations. I uh, watched uh, Detective Mystery last night. Uh, what I want to do this morning is I want to talk about MSK 144. Back in April 29th, um, I did a video about uh, the MSK 144 modulator. It was based on uh, a paper by Joe Taylor and Steve Frankie, the MSK144 protocol for meteor scatter communications is part of a suite of protocols in the WSJTX series. Uh, and what I did back then is I um, simulated the uh, modem using Psychos. And um, what I want to do uh, this morning is I want to look at a demodulator. Um, so let's uh, let's go to Psychos here and. There's my uh, Psychos Lab uh, console. I'm going to open the editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read in the code word that I created for the modulator first. So let's find that. MS, what there, code data. There we go. OK, so what I'm doing is I'm constructing the message um, according to the uh, framework in the paper. And what I've done is I've also chosen the first 17 bits to be this waveform here. So I just can compare what I get from, from the paper. So uh, let's read those bits in. So I'm gonna execute that. So those are my bits. If I wanna look at the bits, I have to adjust the axes a little bit here. Let's go to um, axes properties and we'll just adjust these. the other set there do the same thing okay so that's the data we get this is the i data which are the odd bits and that's the q data which are the even bits and that's the um the same data that that they have that they have in the paper um so that's my data so what i do now is i've read that into the workspace i've created a structure I can just test uh, for the structure. It's called VI and VQ. So we could just say VI just to see if it's there. So there it is, and VQ. Okay, there's my structure. So let's uh, load the ModNum toolbox. And we'll load the Psychos. And then we'll open the modulator. Okay, so there's my mod. Let's fit that to the waveform here. Okay, so there's my modulator from my post back in April the 29th. So I've created two structures for the I and Q uh, data. It's a 144-bit packet. I think it'll last for about 72 milliseconds. So let's read that in, see what happens. Okay. Okay, so there's my I data on the top. Next trace is my Q data. Uh, these are the half sign pulses. So each, this is the I data and this is a Q data. So there's a positive one and there's a positive half sign pulse and there's a negative, uh, negative one there and there's a negative half sign pulse. So the symbols are half uh, sign pulses for a one plus and minus uh, and they occur over uh, one millisecond. The baud rate is um, 2,000 uh, baud per second, and um, the um, the half sign pulses occur over uh, one uh, one millisecond. Okay, and if I look at um, these, are the um, I half sign pulses multiplying cosine, and these are the Q uh, half sign pulses multiplying uh, sine. And when you add them together, you get the MSK waveform, which is phase continuous, which is one of the great properties about it. So that was the modulator. And that's the spectrum there. The spectrum is centered at 1500 hertz. Um, let's quickly look at that. So there's 1500 hertz. Um, the maximum frequency shift is 
uh, 500 hertz up, so it goes up to 2000 hertz, and it goes down to uh, 1000 hertz, so plus or minus 500 or a total shifter of 1000 hertz. Okay, so that's the modulator. Now let's look at the demodulator. So here's the demodulator. So what I've done for the demodulator is I've taken the modulator and I've created a super block. So if I was to open up this modulator super block here, you would see the same thing that we had on the screen there before. So that's the modulator. So I'm reading in my data structures VI and VQ. They go into the modulator. Now to recover my data, what I'm doing here in the demod is I'm just multiplying again on the uh, I channel. I'm multiplying by cosine omega CT. And on the uh, Q channel, I'm multiplying by minus Q sine omega CT. Now that produces a uh, sum and a difference component. The difference component will be my information. The sum component will be the double of frequency, which I don't want. So I've got a low pass filter here to get rid of the, uh, the sum component. And I'm going to adjust the Q. Remember, I put a delay. I delay uh, delayed by half a baud or half or one bit delay in the I in the modulator. So now just to compensate that, to line the data up again, I'm putting the delay in the Q channel here. And let's look at the waveforms. And then, then I'm, what I'm going to do to get back my data is I'm going to integrate and sample. Now, there are many ways of doing this. <clears throat> Typically in practice, I guess, you wouldn't be doing this. You'd be sampling uh, your signal and using digital signal processing routines. But this is just a visual way of looking at the, the modulator. So let's run this now. Let's see what we get. So there's my modulator waveform we saw before. Okay, so I've got a scope buried in the super block, so it's just giving me the same um, the same waveform I saw before. That's my A data, and that's my Q data. That's my recovered I data, my recovered Q data. You can see that they're the same. And that is my uh, I half, half um, uh, the half sine pulses and the Q half sine pulses. So what I'm doing there is for one of these pulses, I'm integrating and sampling to recover the data. So that's the other uh, scope display. Let me just find that one. That's this guy here. So, so there's a positive. Um, uh, I half sine pulse. So what I've done there is I've integrated that and I've sampled it. So that's how I recover my data. So that's just a quick overview of the demodulator for MSK144.